Good evening, my name is Jim Walker. I'm the pastor of Revival from Down Under in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne in Australia. Uh, tonight I've, uh, I'm going to speak about clouds and uh, the clouds I'm going to speak about are the one that Jesus is going to come back in. And so um, I've called this topic Jesus coming back in the clouds. Jesus coming back in the clouds. If we go into uh, 2 Timothy and chapter 2, verse 15, the Apostle Paul tells us, Study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What helps us to rightly divide God's word is this study must be done from all scripture. Uh, because of what Jesus says in Matthew 4 and verse 4 where he says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that is proceeded from the mouth of God. And the Bible is every word that has come out of God's mouth. It's all scripture, it's the word that God spoke. We're also told in Romans chapter 15 verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So the things written aforetime, being Old Testament scripture, are in the book for our learning. So as we study from Old Testament scripture as well as the new, we learn. We learn from scripture. Paul also tells us in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 3 verse 16 that all scripture is profitable for us. All scripture is profitable for us. Hallelujah. Another thing that helps us to rightly divide the word is having an understanding of the godly principle that Paul reveals to us in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 44 through 48. This principle being first the natural and then afterwards that which is spiritual. That which is natural is of the dust of the earth, made from the dust, associated with the dust, and that which is heavenly is, is, is spiritual, that which is associated with the heavens. So what do you see in the heavens? You see the sun, the moon, the stars. You see clouds. Rain comes from heaven. All these things, although being natural things, they represent that which is spiritual. This principle is used by God throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and was used by Jesus when speaking in parables. Another word for parable is proverb. If you study, if you study the word parable and proverb, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, you will find that they come from the same Hebrew word. Also, you'll find the word proverb, parable and proverb in the New Testament, in the Greek, also come from the same Greek word, which is actually unusual in Scripture. But the two particular things, this is what happens. Glory to God. If we go into Matthew 13, uh, it says about parables, uh, and we can also add proverbs to that. In Matthew 13, verse 34, And these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spoke he not unto them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken 
by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So parables are secret. In verse 11 of this chapter of this book, uh, Paul calls them, he said, uh, Jesus calls them the mysteries of the kingdom. Parables are the mysteries of the kingdom and they are secrets that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world from those who do not have ears to hear or eyes to see. Because we see as we read the rest of that parable, Jesus says, it's given to you to know and those that have ears to hear shall hear the, hear the parable. If we go over into uh, Ephesians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul tells us concerning par the, the mysteries. And so here, Paul's talking about the mysteries, so he's talking about parables. All right, you, you need to understand, he's talking about the mysteries of the kingdom. So he's speaking about parables and proverbs. All right? So he says in verse 2, If you've heard the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mysteries as I have brought before. So, mysteries are revealed by revelation. Whereby well, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And so these mysteries are about the mystery of Christ. That which has been hidden from generations. And we know that uh, on the road to Emmaus, in Luke 24, verse 27, Jesus revealed himself from all scripture, from Moses through the prophets, to the two men on the road to Emmaus, where he is hidden. Where he, he is hidden as a mystery. Glory to God. We also find here, it says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So what I get from this is that the, the true apostles and prophets, because we know there are, uh, I believe, when we study, even study the, the, New, the New Testament, we find there are uh, major apostles and there were minor apostles, just as there were major and minor prophets in the Old Testament. And so I believe it's God's major apostles and prophets that get the revelation, that get revelation revealed to them. In verse 9 it says, To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. So it's been hid in God. Who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly, heavenly places might be, might be made known, to the church, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which He purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. This purpose being in Christ before the foundation of the earth. So God purposed everything that was written, everything he did, all the secrets, he did it deliberately. He purposed to do it. Why? So natural man could not understand it. Natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The other thing is we find that uh, scripture says we have not because we ask not. So, you know, we need to be asking to get understanding. When we study God's word using the principle of first and natural of, of First Corinthians 15, we find in the book of Genesis that Abraham is promised two seeds. 
the first of these seeds promised, according to the principle of Paul, must be Abraham's natural seed. And the second seed promised would be Abraham's spiritual seed. This is proven when you read Genesis 13 verse 16, where Abraham is promised a seed which is as the dust of the earth. And that's exactly what Paul said. The natural is as the dust of the earth. And then in, in Genesis 15 verse 5, he is promised a second seed which are as the stars of heaven. Amen? Glory to God. Again, as we continue to study following this principle, if we, if we went through the scriptures, we would find there is a natural Israel, so there must be a spiritual Israel. This is actually shown in uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 6 through 8. The, we also, there is a natural Jew, so there must be a spiritual Jew. This is shown in Romans 2, verse 28 and 29. There is, there is a, a natural priesthood. We know that the natural priesthood was the Levitical. The spiritual priesthood is the Melchizedek order of priests. We also find when we study Galatians and also in Hebrews that there is, we know there's a natural Jerusalem, so there must also be a spiritual Jerusalem. And Paul tells us in Hebrews, Jerusalem which is above, so that is spiritual Jerusalem. Amen. Glory to God. In Matthew 24, in Matthew 24, Jesus is asked by his disciples in, uh, in verse 3, What shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? So this is... Uh, to me, a very clear question. And Jesus' answer takes the rest of the chapter. And he starts off by saying first that let us not be deceived because there's false prophets and all these false things are going to happen before his coming will occur. And then from verse 29 down, he starts to tell us about... about um, uh, what his coming is going to be like. If we read verse 30, it says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You're going to see him coming in the clouds of heaven. Hallelujah. All right, so what is the sign of Jesus in the heavens? Well, what symbolizes Jesus in the heavens? The moon symbolizes Jesus. All right, the sun symbolizing God the Father. The moon symbolizing Jesus the Son and stars in multiple speaking of the Holy Spirit. So what is going to be the sign of Jesus in the heavens? The moon turning to blood. The moon turning to blood. Prophesied of in Joel. Hallelujah. So... Here we see, apart from that, he says, his coming is going to be in the clouds. In the clouds of heaven. Now, heaven is a, a long way above the clouds. Clouds are just up in the sky. You don't get clouds out in outer space. 
So he's not talking about natural clouds. He's talking about something that is spiritual. All right? And so we need to have understanding of what the clouds represent. Glory to God. When we, um, again, I, I say we need to rightly divide the Word of God. And when we, when we study this, verse 29, uh, verse 30, verse 30 comes after verse 29. And when we read verse 29, Jesus says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars, of, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, again, we need to study the word, rightly dividing it, to find out the timing of this, when this actually occurs. And so, because it's been wrongly divided, because scripture has been wrongly divided, they have this wrong. Or they, have, they may not even have understanding that it's actually in, this occurrence is actually in the book of Revelation. And so if we go over into, you know, if you think of what we've just read there, and we go over into the book of Revelation and chapter 6, we find that what Jesus has just said occurs at the opening of the sixth seal in chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. The sun became black as a sackcloth of air, the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Hallelujah. Now, so, here, it's, it's, it's fulfilling what Jesus said in Matthew 20, what will be the sign of your coming? So, this is this here in Re Revelation is the sign of his coming. At this time, when this happens, everybody will know he's coming back. Now, when we do a a proper study on the seals, trumpets, and vials, we find that they are not. Although they are, they follow one another in the scripture, they actually, their occurrence doesn't follow one another. They are, they are not concurrent. They are concurrent, they are not consecutive. They are concurrent, they are not consecutive. All right? They occur together. And, and if, if you did a study on them, the first thing you find is that the, 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 the vials, the vials are all opened, we're told in Revelation 16, and poured out upon those that received the mark of the beast, and that is during the last 42 months before Jesus comes back. So what occurs in the pouring out of the vials and vial number seven has got to be at the end of that 42-month period. But when you study the trumpets and the seals, you find what happens at the sixth and seventh seal and the sixth and seventh trumpet also occurs at the sixth and seventh vial. So they must be concurrent. And we need to understand this because then that gives you the timing factor of, Ma of what we've just read in Matthew 24 and verse 30 and, and 29 and 30. It gives you the, 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 
This is at the end of the 42-month period of time, not before. It's at the end of that 42 months. Just prior to Jesus coming back. Because we know at the seventh trumpet, it says the mystery of God is finished. The mystery of God is finished. Hallelujah. So what else did we see? We saw him coming in the clouds. So these are these clouds, uh, to find out what they are, we need to study. If we go into Acts chapter 1, this is at Jesus' ascension, what we know as the ascension. It says in verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. A cloud received him. Then said in verse 10, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now, white apparel is the righteousness of the saints. And I believe these are two men that have come out of heaven to be clothed in white righteousness. They're clothed in white linen. So they've come out of heaven because white linen is the clothing for heaven. And they are witnessing Jesus' ascension into heaven. I actually believe they are Moses and Elijah, the two witnesses of Revelation 11, when they are studied correctly. When they are studied correctly. We also see, if we go back into Matthew, So, he's received up into clouds and they said, as you've seen this Jesus go, as you've seen this Jesus, verse 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner. How's he going to come? In the way he went, in the cloud. He went into a cloud, he's going to come in the cloud. Because that's what they said. And I believe what they said. It's as simple as that. So if we go now into uh, Matthew 24, back into Matthew 24, verse 30, the other thing that occurs here is when this occurs, it says, Shall all the tribes of the earth mourn? M O U R N, mourn. So they're all going to mourn at his coming. And because his, because his coming is in flaming fire, people are going to mourn. Now, if we, if we look at that in Revelation chapter 1. And in verse 7, it says, Behold, he comes with clouds. So here again, the Apostle John is telling us, Jesus is coming with clouds. And every eye shall see him. Every eye. And they also which pierced him, and all kindred of the earth shall wail. They're not going to be happy because, because he's not coming back to be their saviour. He's coming back to destroy them. They're going to wail. Now again, when you study this, way, this word wail and the word mourn in Matthew 24 verse 30, they both come from the same Greek word. They both come from the same, so they mean mean the same thing. What he's saying here is what Jesus said. They're going to mourn. They're going to wail. They're not going to be happy. They're going to be lots of lamenting. Glory to God. I 
Now, there are many, many scriptures I could probably use in, you know, talk about clouds. So now we've got to try and prove what clouds are. And so, again, we go into old scripture, you know, to prove what, or not what are the clouds, but who are the clouds. When we study scripture correctly, I believe we'll find that the clouds are people. The clouds represent symbolically people. And if we read Isaiah 60, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 60 is all about the city of God of Revelation 21. When you compare Isaiah 60 as against Revelation 21, Isaiah 60 is about spiritual Jerusalem. And spiritual Jerusalem, we are told in Revelation 21 verse 2, is the bride of Christ. And so in verse 1 of Revelation, of Daniel 60, of uh, Isaiah 60, it says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Is risen upon thee. Verse 8, Who are these that fly as a cloud? Who are these that fly as a cloud? and as the doves to the windows. Hallelujah. Who are these that fly as the clouds? So, talking about people, because the city of God is made up of people. city of God is made up of people. Glory to God. Amen? So, as we read earlier, there is a natural Jerusalem, spiritual Jerusalem. The Jerusalem of Revelation 21 is spiritual Jerusalem. And we're told in verse 2, and let's have a look at what, let's have a read of it, verse 2. Revelation 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So here straight away, the new Jerusalem is heavenly Jerusalem, and it's the bride of Christ. Verse 9, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and taught me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit, to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. That's what we just read in Isaiah 60 verse 1. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto stones most precious. So here, her rise shine, thy light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Well, what is the glory of the Lord? Now, in, 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 in Psalm 19, verse 1, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. And so what do we see in the heavens? The sun, moon, and stars. The, I've already said it, the sun representing God the Father, the moon representing Jesus the Son, and the stars representing the Holy Spirit. When we, when we study the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, you know, there, there is one resurrection of the Son, one resurrection of moon glory, and one resurrection of star glory. So shall it be in the resurrection. 
and the moon is going to turn to blood. That which symbolizes Christ in the heavens is going to turn to blood. And the sun will be darkened. The moon is a reflection of the light of the sun. So when the sun is darkened, the moon will not give its light anymore and it will be revealed as blood. Now, when we study, if clouds were not important, having the understanding of the clouds, they weren't important. Why would Satan want to be above the clouds? Because that's what we're told. If we turn into Isaiah chapter 14, Verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did, which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will ascend exalt my throne above the stars of God. The spiritual seed of Abraham. I will. I will also, uh, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation the side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Now, how many I wills was that? How many I wills? Five. Five I wills. How many wounds did Jesus suffer on the cross as we know of? Five. Five wounds to counter the five I wills of Satan. And it, it, just to finish off about Satan, verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see you shall narrowly look upon you and consider you, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? Is this it? So why aren't we doing it now? Why did it cause us so much trouble now? If we're going to do it then, because is this him? That's how it should be right now. Is this him? Lord of God. If we, um, if we go into 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 2, here Peter's talking about false brethren. If you went to verse 1, but there were false prophets, and so he's talking about false prophets, false brethren, false teachers, etc., and he says in verse 17 of them, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest. So here he likens false brethren to clouds. False brethren, he likens them to clouds. And then Jude takes it a step further. In Jude, if we turn to, over to Jude, 
Jude also talking about false brethren. It says in verse 12, These are spots in your feast of charity, that is communion, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are. But they are clouds without water. Clouds without water. So, if these false brethren are clouds without water, does that tell us something? We are to be clouds with water. The water speaks. What do you get from clouds? Rain. Rain comes from clouds. And rain, when you study it correctly, symbolizes the Word of God. So, clouds are to carry the Word. Clouds carry rain. The clouds are to carry the Word of God. Isaiah 55, as the, the rain comes down from heaven, so is my Word. So shall my Word be. So, it, you know, if you're a cloud, God expects you to be a rain carrier, a water carrier. Expect you to be a water carrier. If you've not got any water, you could be tied to these people. And we don't want that happening, do we? So we need to get as much water in the cloud as we possibly can. Now, because of these understandings of, of the clouds, etc., and Jesus' actual return being after the sixth, uh, the sixth opening of the sixth seal, sixth trumpet, sixth vial, um, and Jesus coming is at the end of the 42 months reign of the two beasts of Revelation 13, then there are many pastors who have incorrectly divided 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and when they preach from, I think it's verse 16 and 17. So let's turn to 1 Thessalonians. Normally they just preach the, on these two verses. For the Lord himself shall descend from, from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. In the clouds. Hallelujah. So we're going to be caught up at Christ's return in the clouds. Because that's when we've read, it's coming back in the clouds. So this coming back here cannot be seven years before what occurs in Revelation 19, which people are preaching. There is only one coming return of the Lord and it's at the end of the three and a half year rule of the two beasts of Revelation 13 because it said so at Jesus return in Revelation 19 he takes the two beasts who have ruled for 42 months and cast them into the lake of fire and that is you find that out by studying the word correctly Glory to God. <clears throat> when we go back, because it's been taken, if we don't read all the scriptures concerning this, not just 15 and six, 16 and 17, we actually take out what's said. It's out of context. And so we need to go back into verse 13, where he said, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not as others, others do, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Them, there are the words, when you study the word sleep, it just means rest. And, and peop, the, the people that have gone before us, that have gone up into heaven before us, they're asleep, they're at rest. And when he comes back, it's gonna, he's going to bring them with him. They don't rise out of the graves like many are preaching. They're already up there. There's no grave. They're not down there to rise from. And how do we know this? Because of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, verse 20, all go on to one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knows the spirit of man that goes upward? and the spirit of the beast that goes down into the earth. So when man dies, his spirit doesn't go down via hell. His spirit goes up. It's got to go back to God who gave it, whether it's saved or unsaved. The unsaved spirit will burn because God is a consuming fire. The saved spirit is clothed and can pass through the fire into God's presence. Let's read also chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now that's very clear. There are no spirits down there. They're all up there. So where does that make hell? Hell is not down there. Hell is up there. Scripture. Because... Scripture's been wrongly divided. Hallelujah. And, he, and they that have gone up, he will bring with him. They, the one that he, they that come back with him, they're coming back. They are the clouds that come back with him. Clouds of people. Clouds of saved ones. Glory to God. Finally, let's read what it says in, in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and in verse 1. The Apostle Paul says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Hallelujah. There are many witnesses, and yet there are only two. And the, they, all them that have gone before us, they are a cloud of witnesses. A cloud of witnesses. And they will come back and return with him at the end of the 42 months of Revelation 13. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.